Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. Strong winds are blowing over a wide stretch of the Northern Valley, including Devil's Lake and Grand Forks. That's a photo from a DOT camera near the Drayton Bridge north of Grafton. There's a no-travel alert in extreme northeastern part of North Dakota, including Grand Forks and Pembina County. In the southern half of the valley, the wind isn't as strong right now, but it has started to blow. While conditions have been delayed slightly, don't let your guard down. We have more on travel conditions in a couple of minutes, but let's begin with the very latest on what's going on with Hutch Johnson. Hutch? All right, a live look across the FM skyline. You're looking to the north. That's the direction that the gusty winds will be coming in from. We're already seeing some flakes flying through the air as some of this snow on the ground is beginning to get lofted up in the atmosphere. And as the winds increase, visibility is going to continue to reduce. We have a blizzard warning in effect for the eastern portion of North Dakota from Jamestown through Fargo, North uh, Grand Forks and the Devil's Lake Basin and the Red River Valley counties of Minnesota until noon tomorrow. There's some light snow falling from the sky right now. The winds, though, if we take a look at those, are picking up more earnestly to the north, where we have gusts approaching 50 miles per hour in Grand Forks, the latest gust in Fargo, 39 miles per hour. Particularly in open country, things are going to get pretty treacherous tonight, and the winds will be in their strongest during the overnight hours. However, they will last toward daybreak as the Arctic air moves in. Mike and Andrea, wind chills first thing in the morning near 45 below with still brisk winds and blizzard-like conditions across portions of the valley. So we'll have hour by hour uh, forecast here in just a few minutes to let you know what you can expect as we go through the rest of your Thursday. But the cold is here to take hold for a while. All right. Thanks, Hutch. The impending weather has prompted the Grand Forks Air Force Base to close tomorrow. We've also received two-hour delays for school and buses within Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo, and Fargo Catholic School Districts tomorrow. There are plenty more schools and businesses with varying weather-related announcements. We have them on our website, valleynewslive.com. Keep checking that because the list is likely to grow, and those announcements may change depending on how bad the weather becomes. Earlier, we mentioned the travel alert for the northeastern part of North Dakota. Joining us now is Valley News Team's Joshua Pagaro, who headed north along Interstate 29. He joins us live in Harwood with the latest on the road conditions. Joshua, what's it, what's it like out there right now? Mike and Andrew, I can tell you right now that the, week, with the road conditions were very treacherous just coming up here to Harwood. There was blowing snow all over 2981. Um, the visibility was so low. As I was driving up here, this was like about 45 minutes ago, we saw uh, there were semis that were swerving going back and forth. I'm at a safe place right now at a gas station. Um, in Harwood because it was just so windy and the snow is just blowing across the roads. Um, again, it's very cold out here. And, and what I wanted to do is like north of early, I've been out since early just doing, you know, doing live hits and checking on the roads. And I managed to speak with a trucker um, in Grand Forks who is driving from west to east. Now the, the west is where a lot of the roads were covered with snow. And, and when I interviewed him, here's what he had to say. The road uh, was really clear, but the snow was blowing across the powdery snow was, uh, from the wind was blowing across the road. Mind your P's and Q's going across bridges or anywhere you need to see some obviously where it was water or ice. Again, this this wind is no joke out here, Mike and Andrea. Like like when I was driving again on 29 and 81, the roads were it was low visibility. The roads were covered with snow, and I urge those heading out in the morning or heading out tonight to use extreme caution. I'm gonna throw it right back out to you in the studio. All right, thanks, Joshua. You do the same coming back to the station. And stick around. We will have an update on your weather conditions in just a few moments. Authorities need your help finding a missing woman. 37-year-old Jennifer Olson of Monoman was last seen on Sunday when she left her Monoman residence for work. She was driving a white 2013 Ford Taurus sedan with Minnesota license plate 452UXJ. Jennifer is 5'3", 120 pounds, with green eyes and wearing blue scrubs with a Polaris jacket, just like the one in the picture. You can call your local police or sheriff's department if you have any information on Olson. 
Severe weather has always impacted schools in North Dakota, but some legislative bills under consideration might reduce that impact in the long run. Billings County just approved a four-day school week, and a House proposal would make it even easier for other schools to go that route. It would switch the amount of time that students need to be in school from 175 days to 962 hours for elementary schools and 1,050 hours for middle and high schools. We haven't specifically talked about uh, having less days of instruction during the winter season, but overall that bill allows us to flex our time even in the spring to accommodate any days we may have had. Their proposal could allow administrators to front load schedules to counter possible winter weather and to avoid makeup days. General Mills is voluntarily recalling five pound bags of gold metal unbleached all-purpose flour because they may be contaminated with salmonella. There's a best used by date of April 20th, 2020. No other gold metal flour products are affected by the recall. The issue was discovered during a sampling of the five pound bags. So far, General Mills has not received any reports of illnesses related to the recall. Consumers are urged to discard the product or return it to the place of purchase. Scammers will do just about anything to make sure they get at your money. But a Fargo man says they're going way too far, and it's scary how much they know about people's personal lives. Valley News Team's Katie Opperly spoke with a family who recently got a call that has them rethinking what information is out there. Jeff Bloom says his parents get scam calls frequently, but none compare to the most recent. The information that was being shared um, was so legitimate. Um, it was a lot of detailed information. He says the scammers claimed their grandchild needed help. They knew family members' names, personal descriptions, recent medical situations, and even detailed conversations between each other. My mom had mentioned to the grandkids, I have furniture if you need furniture, you know, because I know you're going to be, be moving or you need, you need a furniture. And they even mentioned that. What concerned Bloom the most is the idea of where the scammers could have collected this information from. It could be from a number of different ways as they're getting it through phishing emails, hacking into your actual computer, hacking into accounts that you have through banks, credit cards, and getting your information from there, or um, going through your trash. Bloom says his parents were convinced that the people on the other end of the phone were legitimate, but luckily hung up to call family instead of falling for their ploy. Hang up on them. Always just hang up because then you won't be victimized. Fargo police say the most important thing is being able to recognize that it's a scam, even if they come prepared with extensive information and play into people's emotions. Be wary about where you're putting your, your email address, your phone number, when you're giving that out because you don't know what's going to happen with that information and what's tied to that information on the internet too as well. After seeing the links that scammers are willing to go, Bloom says people should have a conversation with their family and the community so that everyone knows that this is happening. In Fargo, Katie Opperly, Valley News Live. Experts are warning you to take extra precautions because the Federal Trade Commission is closed right now due to the government shutdown. The FTC is the department that monitors scam calls. North Dakota's governor continues to push for a Theodore Roosevelt pres presidential library and museum. Their proposal calls for state and private money totaling $150 million. Governor Doug Burgum says the project, which would be built near Dickinson, is not a new idea. This idea has been around for 20 years. Dickinson State University, uh, the president 20 years ago working with the National Park Service envisioned this idea. People in Dickinson have pushed this thing forward. Legislators have supported. Money's been appropriated for it. I've just come along at a time where it's coalescing, where suddenly we have all the national partners. Governor Burgum adds that plans call for only using earnings from the legacy fund for the state's share of $50 million. Speed limits will be raised on more than 5,000 miles of Minnesota Highway following a five-year study by the Department of Transportation. Engineers looked at 7,000 miles of two-lane highways, and the ones marked in green on this map, about 77%, are going from 55 to 60 MnDOT had to balance safety with traffic flow. They looked at the way the road is designed and whether it's flat and straight or curvy and tilted. They also looked, took into consideration how fast traffic is already going, the accident history, what kind of shape the shoulders are in, and the surrounding terrain. Is the shoulder wide enough? If they leave the shoulder, will they hit a tree? Will they hit nothing? Will they drive into a cornfield? Those are the types of things that we want to evaluate. 
A few highways in our area that are affected are Minnesota 1, 9, and 34. Those new speeds will go into effect when signs are posted. MnDOT says that will happen by the spring of 2019.